Good evening, hockey fans, and welcome to another edition of Ice Wolves Insider. Well, on tonight's program, we'll be chatting with Ice Wolves players Brayden Alexson and Graham Smerick, as well as Ice Wolves head coach Bob Beattie. And then later on in our usual fan segment, we'll be chatting with uh, Ice Wolves play-by-play -play guy Dustin Forbes, as well as Ice Wolves followers Curtis Galicki and Kevin Radloff. Should be a great show. We'll see you right back. Welcome back to Ice Wolves Insider. At this point, we're talking with uh, Ice Wolves players Graham Smerick and Braden Alexson. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Kelly. All right. Well, uh, you guys have a, a couple of big victories over the Flin Flon Bombers uh, under your belts uh, the last few weeks here, one before Christmas. Of course, your first game back after Christmas. Let's talk about uh, your most uh, recent victory over the Bombers, uh, the one nothing shutout win uh, the other day. Uh, Graham, what do you think it was that uh, helped you guys uh, to victory over the Bombers for the second straight night? Well, it was uh, hard work. Um, we really competed on pucks. Um, we didn't give them much. Uh, Miles had a really good game, but I think we played solid defensively as well, where we have been lacking a lot this year. Um, so it was a nice uh, pick up a victory against our rivals, and especially doing it in a playoff fashion. Yeah. What 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 victory felt better? The you know grinding out the one nothing victory or the the, the four one decision before Christmas. I uh, I just like winning. It is you know it feels the same for me whether we score nine goals or one. I just you know just as long as we get the two points, I'm okay with anything. Yeah, Braden, uh, what what was your assessment in terms of why you guys uh, won, particularly that that one nothing victory there? Uh well, like Graham said, that was just a good hard work effort by everybody. It was good uh, after Christmas, you know, got those legs, get the legs out in the first couple periods, and then just worked hard. And Miles played a good game, and we played sound defensively, and just. Kept chipping away and got the victory. Yeah. Now, you're one of the youngest players on the team. In fact, I think you might be the youngest player in the league uh, this year. Um, how, is, how are these two victories uh, in terms of a confidence boost uh, for the team, especially uh, the young players on the team? Is, has it been a big confidence oh. boost beating the Bombers twice in a row? Oh, yeah, that's a real big confidence boost because like, we've had our ups and downs like every team does. And just going out and showing that we can compete and play against those top place teams and beat them, it's just nice to know. Yeah. Graham, obviously you've been around for a few years. Uh, you've seen, uh, I guess, various installments of the northern rivalry between the Bombers and the Ice Wolves. Do you think that rivalry is still, uh, still alive uh, this year? Uh, yeah, I think so. It's definitely calmer than it usually is. Um, last year, especially, a lot more fights. We had uh, two tough teams last year. This year, uh, they're a little more skilled, but uh, they, they still can... Uh, can can fight and whatever, but last year was a different. We were both you know fourth and fifth in the league. We had to earn every victory, so a lot of, a lot tougher rivalry back then. Yeah, Braden, uh, how much was uh, I guess losing the first two games uh, in Flin Flon? How much of that was was motivation in the back of your minds when you guys were playing these last two games against the Bombers? Oh, uh, that was a lot of motivation actually, because we went in both those games, and I know we weren't really ready. We the first game they blew us out of the water, and then the second game. It was a little closer, but we still didn't play like we thought we knew we could. So uh, it was motivation too in there. After the game, they thought they were a better team than us, and we just had motivation to go and prove like we can play with these guys and compete with the top teams in this league. Yeah. Now, as it, as it has it, in terms of the, the schedule, it's kind of a quirky schedule for you guys. You guys had a pretty long Christmas break, and you play this one game, and then you're basically waiting for this, this trade deadline to pass here, uh, January 10th. Uh, What's that been like in terms of, you know, kind of focusing on the task at hand, getting ready for the, the coming games and, and yet dealing with, with that distraction? I guess it doesn't help that when media guys ask you about this, but, but what's it been like there, Green? Um, you know, it's been tough. You get, you know, you see new faces every day and you never know who's coming in. If you're leaving, who's leaving, you know, your friend, whatever. But, uh, you know, once this deadline passed, it's going to be good. We're going to have, we know which guys we're going with after that deadline and it's a uh, sprint to the finish. Yeah. Braden, have you noticed uh, people a little bit on edge uh, just waiting for this deadline to kind of come and go, or is it just something that no one's really paying attention to? Uh, yeah, like some guys, you know, some guys are worried, like, am I losing my spot? Am I going somewhere else? Like, what's happening? But for the most part, everybody's just content. Like, you know, I got to work hard and show them that I want to be here for the rest of the year. And I think once that passes, like, everybody's going to say, these are the group we got, and we just got to go with it. Yeah. Braden, this is uh, the first time you've been on the program. We haven't had a chance to talk to you about uh, your season so far. As, as we mentioned earlier, you are uh, the youngest player on the team. Uh, what's it been like uh, uh, playing in La Ronge this season and, and playing with uh, your, your line mates that you're playing with right now? 
Uh, it's been a good adjustment. I mean, like from going from major AAA to junior is obviously a big step because you're playing against guys four or five years older than you, bigger, faster, stronger. So it took a little while to adjust, but I feel I'm getting more comfortable now and starting to fit in my surroundings. And uh, I found some pretty good chemistry. I'm playing with uh, Tim Rollins now. And uh, we just, Bobby put us together on a road trip once and we just found some good chemistry and I just think that's going pretty good right now. Yeah, I think Sebastian Beauregard's on your yeah, line Sebastian as well. Yeah, Sebastian too. How's yeah. that been going? That's been going good. You know, mm -hmm. Sebastian's a good player, a really good playmaker. He works hard, he plays both ends of the ice. Yeah. Does it help uh, having a number of guys that uh, you played with last year on, on Beardies on, on this t team this year? Uh, there's uh, quite a few uh, Beardies grads on this team. Uh, yeah, there's a few of us. You know, that helps a little bit. Like, you know, just buddies in the room when I first got here and say, like, you know, help me settle in a bit. But after that, it's just play hockey, so I don't really think about that too much. Yeah. Earlier this year, uh, you uh, you were a double winner in terms of the SJHL uh, Weekly Awards. I think you were actually uh, Rookie of the Week, maybe Player of the Week as well. Uh, what was that like, uh, getting recognized like that? I think that's the first time uh, all season that anyone's got two awards. I was all right. You know, I had a, had a couple of games there. I worked hard. and um, I don't know. You can't really get that stuff. It's nice to have. But, you know, it doesn't really mean a lot. You just got to go keep playing hard and hope for the best. Yeah. Graham, uh, of course, you guys have uh, the Yorkton Terriers coming up. Uh, I believe you guys have faced them already this season, and uh, they are going to be a, a pretty good challenge. Uh, I believe points-wise, they are statistically the best team in the league right now. You guys have them at home ice or on home ice Friday night. Um, maybe tell us what uh, you guys have to do to have victory there Friday night against the Terriers. Well, they have uh, very mobile defensemen, and uh, they have some small defensemen that can skate and some big ones that also can skate. So. Um, biggest thing is uh, we're going to try to take that away, not let them move the puck, make them pass that puck away, and hopefully we can create some turnovers, get it behind their D and uh, work the cycle. Uh, we really, uh, that's probably our biggest thing is getting the, those defensemen out of the game. Yeah. How are you guys uh, viewing the schedule uh, this coming month here? Because like, uh, really you only have the one road trip, and then everything else is basically on home ice. Having said that, you play a lot of good teams on home ice as well. Uh, how are you guys viewing uh, this, this coming month here? Well, playing at home is always an advantage for us. We have a very unique rink. Um, teams don't like coming up here, uh, coming up uh, this far north and uh, having to play us in that small rink with a great atmosphere from the fans. So, uh, you know, yes, they are tough teams and they may be more skilled, but it's, uh, as we showed against Flin Flon, uh, you know, anything can happen. Yeah, well said. Well, uh, guys, thanks very much for being on the program today. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you. All right. Just joining us, this is Ice Wolves Insider. We've been chatting with uh, Ice Wolves players Graham Smerick and Braden Alexson. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Ice Wolves Insider. At this point, we're talking with Ice Wolves head coach and director of hockey operations, Bob Eby. Bob, uh, once again, welcome to the program. Thanks, Kelly. All right. So uh, let's just get the elephant uh, in the room out of the way right off the hop. Of course, we're approaching uh, very close to the uh, SJHL's uh, trade deadline, really trade deadline for all of junior hockey. Um, what can you tell us about how things are going in terms of, you know, whether teams are making calls and, and, and how you're thinking this, this deadline will, will come and go here in LaBranche? Well, you know, going into the last few days, uh, I think the consensus was it was going to be a fairly uh, quiet deadline, but uh, certainly it's, it's been extremely busy the last couple of days, uh, you know, both pursuing uh, uh, some options and, and fielding some calls. Hmm. What is uh, your sense in terms of um, how it's, it's going league-wide? Do you think that's, that's basically the case now where we're going to see a lot of moves uh, league-wide or do you think it's going to be kind of a quiet deadline? Well, I, I think that there, there is a lot of talk of uh, you know, the, you know, the front runners trying to keep pace with each other and, and uh, add players. I know that uh, you know, some teams are fairly aggressive on, uh, on their acquisitions and uh, but, uh, you know, uh, from our perspective, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at improving our team and, and uh, I guess you have to try and balance, uh, uh, you know, the welfare of, 
you know, of the team with, uh, you know, loyalty to players and, uh, and uh, you know, what's best for them and, and uh, you know, what, what is best for the team. We're, we'll make, uh, uh, we'll make a trade if, uh, if we feel the value is there either now or in the future, but, uh, you know, we have no intention of uh, mailing it in and, uh, you know, I think, uh, we certainly owe it to the fans to be as competitive as possible, and uh, uh, you know, uh, we'll see what what develops. I, I can say that uh, you know, we're down to 6D, uh, so we're actively pursuing uh, you know to add another defenseman. Are there? Uh, you don't have to name names or anything like that, but are there uh, any untouchables uh, on your team right now, or is or how is that going? Well, I like our team. I, I like our veterans. I, I you know, uh, you know, we we have some players that I think if we did uh, uh, trade, it, it would be, uh, you know, uh, I guess uh, uh, an indication that we are mailing it in to to the rest of the players in the room and uh, and to our fan base and uh, you know. Uh, obviously, there's several players: Graham Samaric, Brett McNevin, uh, you know, Miles Havdebo. Uh, that uh, you know are three of those players. Uh, I, I like the leadership that we've got from all our 20-year-olds, and uh, you know, I think uh, you know to trade one or two 20-year-olds, uh, you know, it would be a little bit uh, unfair to the rest of the, the dressing room. Mm. Now, of course, uh, a lot of these veterans have been outstanding in, in recent weeks for your team, uh, particularly in, in these wins uh, against uh, Flin Flon. Do you, do you feel that that has increased uh, interest among other Junior A teams in terms of, uh, you know, trying to pry these veterans loose from your club? Well, I don't think, uh, you know, two or three or, or half a dozen games are going to make a lot of difference. Uh, you know, they're, they're not really watching the, the performance that... Uh, you know that we've been able to see, and uh, you know, to be quite frank, uh, you know, the uh, I, I think uh, most of uh, uh, most of the clubs that have been calling are undervaluing, uh, you know, what we have to offer. Hmm. I know teams uh, typically, you know, they they've got uh, their own agenda and so forth, and don't really want to react to what other clubs are doing. But yet, it seems that every year, if you see one team make a, a pretty bold move or get a big addition, it, it seems like it, it, it uh, triggers an arms race uh, sometimes. Are you finding that Nip wins edition of Eli Lichtenwald, a, a former SJHL Rookie of the Year, you know, a six foot six, two hundred seventeen pound forward, he's got a history of putting up points. Has that changed the dynamic? In, in the Bauer Conference, maybe not necessarily for you, but are you finding that you think that other teams are, are possibly going to try and, and match, uh, you know, that addition to, uh, to the Hawks? Well, I don't think that, uh, you know, the one addition, certainly that's a, you know, a, a real positive uh, uh, move, uh, you know, for Flynn Fly or for uh, Nippon rather, but uh, I, I think, uh, you know, the teams that, uh, you know, Think or or smell, uh, you know the the opportunity for success, uh, you know are are going all out. Uh, but uh, again, uh, you know we have to, you know, think of what's best, uh, you know, for for our hockey club. And uh, you know, I'm not going to make somebody better uh, uh, in our division or outside of our division for for their benefit. Mm. Okay, well, let's talk about uh, the most recent game, and that was basically the one game you guys have played since the Christmas break, yet another victory over the Flint Flon Bombers. So you have to be very happy that your team has, has responded in such a way against uh, a team that has, for the longest time, been in first place in, in the Bauer Conference. Uh, no longer there, but uh, give us your assessment about the most recent victory, the one nothing uh, home ice victory. Well, I thought it was a great effort. Uh, you know, it was uh, you know, another uh, solid four-line you know, 60 uh, uh, performance that, uh, you know, we had a, a, a great effort. Uh, we were puck hungry and, uh, you know, it's the way that we need to play uh, to be successful. It, uh, it was great to end the break on, uh, on a winning note and uh, it's uh, certainly good to start the, uh, you know, the, 
the next uh, portion of our season uh, after after the new year on a, on a winning note. Uh, Miles was, uh, you know, he, he was fantastic in the in the win. Obviously, with the shutout, uh, it was a it was a tight game. Uh, you know, you know some opportunities both both ends of the rink and. Uh, you know, a couple of posts uh, on both uh, uh, both ends, both nets. Uh, you know, it could have gone either way, but uh, we were certainly competing, and uh, you know, we uh, we'll take the the win. Does a win like that have uh, like almost more value than say the the four one victory uh, before Christmas, uh, knowing that your team was able like in a game where both teams knew they they had a chance to win, and, and your team was able to grind out a one nothing victory? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, very good for our confidence uh, earlier on uh, you know as we've talked about we had uh, you know uh, a lot uh, you know a dozen one goal losses and that we weren't be able to uh, you know find a way to to win or get points out of uh, those games and uh, you know to win a, a one nothing game uh, certainly is uh, good for our psyche now, I don't know, I didn't check this, if that was the first shutout victory for your team this year or not, but I know there have been a couple of uh, close calls where it seemed that the goaltender was going to get a shutout and things fell apart really, really late. That must have felt good. Uh, you must have felt good for, for Miles in yeah. picking up the, the shutout there. Yeah, it was great. It was great to see Miles get the shutout uh, that he deserved and, uh, you know, it uh, was good for the team. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, after the trade deadline, uh, your your first team up is the Yorkton Terriers, uh, a very tough squad this year. Uh, you guys, I believe, have, have already pay, uh, faced them uh, this season. Uh, what uh, what kind of challenge do they present, and what will you guys have to do to beat them on home ice this coming Friday? Well, they're they're a veteran team, and obviously they're in first place. Uh, you know, for a reason, they're they're a real solid team. Their their uh, defense is. Uh, you know, probably the best in the league. Uh, they've been getting good goaltending, and they've got a veteran core of forwards and uh, a good mix of uh, size, grit, and and scoring. It's going to be, a, you know, a, a challenge. There's no question, uh, but uh, uh, you know, it'll be a good measuring stick for us. And uh, uh, you know, we feel that uh, you know that we can compete with any team in the league. We we do have. Uh, you know the balance of January gives us six home games, you know, and and three road games, all, all against tough opponents. Uh, but uh, you know we're going to have to take advantage of uh, of our home games certainly to you know to uh, try and uh, get some separation from Malfort and and get back in the hunt. But uh, you know Yorkton will be a good test for us. All right. Well, Bob, uh, thanks very much for uh, being on the program today. You're welcome. All right. If you're just joining us, this is Ice Wolves Insider, and we've been chatting with Ice Wolves head coach Bob Beattie. We'll be right back with From the Stands. Welcome back to Ice Wolves Insider. It's time now for our usual fan segment from the stands, and we're joined now by Kevin Radloff, Curtis Skalicki, and Dustin Forbes. Guys, welcome to the program. Thanks. Glad to be back. All right. So obviously the trade deadline is uh, kind of the big topic of the day, and um, just wanted to get your guys' thoughts about how you think uh, this could happen here on the ranch. Obviously the team could do a bunch of things, uh, either stand pat or make just a few moves or actually uh, sell the farm if they wanted to. How do you think this is going to shake down here on the ranch? I'll start with you there, Curtis. Well, I don't think you're going to get rid of any of your non-20 year old players because you're kind of building yourself up for the next couple of years, but we've got some assets. Bob's not going to trade anybody unless he gets full value for them, and it just depends on what team needs to fill what parts. I mean, we've got some, some, some pretty good leadership, some pretty good grit. We've got some good goaltending. You know, it, again, it's up to Bob to determine what he can get the best for him if he decides to do anything at all because we're still fighting for a playoff spot. Yeah. Kevin, your thoughts on uh, this trade deadline? Uh, it all depends on whether you think two home games possibility in a Survivor Series is worth the not trading your assets away. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we're fighting tooth and nail with Melford right now for the final spot, and I don't see us catching Battleford. So, oh, oh. 
it, where's the fine line of mm -hmm. uh, do you not get those home games or the home game for the survivor, or do you you know get rid of the assets and just go for next year and the year after? Yeah, if it wasn't for that fifth place uh, playoff spot, uh, the, the, the Icewolves would probably be in a completely different uh, conversation about this. Absolutely, no question, sellers, but. Now you got to think about that. Dustin, uh, your thoughts on the trade deadline here? Yeah, I think both guys made good points. Uh, Kevin, obviously, you know, it's a fine line of what they have to do. They have six 20-year-olds that they can get rid of if they so choose to, but those 20-year-olds bring leadership, they bring experience. And looking at the roster on a whole, you have a pretty young roster. Uh, you have six 20-year-olds, six 19-year-olds, and for the majority of them, they're all 18. You have Owen LeClaire, who's 17, Braden Alexson, who's 16. So you have to be able to work that line of, how do we stay competitive going forward for the rest of the year because we don't want to sell everything because we still have a shot and how do we improve going forward and uh, it, it's a fine line I'm glad I'm not in the, the chair making that decision uh, obviously Curtis has said it before I'm not going to argue with a four-time coach <laughs> of the year winner so it'll be interesting to see what Bob does well and just to further that I mean we've beaten each one of those teams and played very well against all of them so I mean if you end up in fifth Nobody wants to face a Bob Beattie team in the playoffs. Well, and anything can change in playoffs. Playoffs is yeah. a completely different game. You saw the last game they played, the one nothing victory against Flint Flon. That's a playoff game from start to finish. The only goal went off Brendan Boyd's skate into the back of the net, and they won the game. And, and Buffalo has, a, has not won a game in this in, in the, this barn. His G, goals against has got to be a 10. <laughs> <laughs> He's brutal in this building. <laughs> I, I don't, I've seen a fifth place team make the playoffs and do well, and we're not anywhere near the same fifth place team that did it hmm. three, four years ago. And I just don't, personally don't see a go for it chance at all. I hmm. just don't, not that we can't do something, I don't see the point, though. I don't see the long-term benefits if we can sell a couple guys. Yeah, and, and not to really put you completely on the spot, but I know you're one of the, the guys that's wondering, you know, maybe could, should we have sold a few guys last year for, for this yeah, year? And it's was, easy for us to second guess. I was guess. definitely a sell Kare guy oh, okay. personally, so, um, you know, could have set us up a little bit more for this year already, but, you know, that's all yeah. hindsight. Exactly. All right. Um, now, you know, the Ice Wolves obviously still think they've got a really good shot at, uh, at fifth place. Uh, what remains to be seen is who they would actually face if they uh, secure that playoff position. Uh, right now, it really seems to be uh, wide open. It looked like it was going to be for sure one of Battlefords or, uh, or Nipwin. Now, you know, the way the Flint Flon Bombers have played recently, of course, thanks in part to the Ice Wolves play, you know, you, you can't uh, discount the possibility of Flint Flon being in fourth. Who do you guys think is actually going to be the fourth place team in this conference? And who do you hope is the fourth place team if the Ice Wolves actually uh, make the first round? I'll start with you there, Dustin. Well, if I'm a betting man, I say it's Battlefords. Simply on the basis that Flin Flon is a good hockey team. They have offensive skill and Devin Buffalo for, you know, all the struggles he has at the Mel Heglin Uniplex is a pretty good goaltender and one of the best 19-year-old goalies in the league. Davis Jones in Nipwin is arguably the best goalie in the league, you can make that argument. So I think those two teams are gonna uh, battle it out for second and third. It's funny how at the beginning of the season it was Flin Flon and everybody else, and now it's Humboldt, and then Flin Flon, ba Nick Wynn, and then Battlefords you can kind of throw in there. So uh, my guess is Battlefords, that's what I'm gonna say. Uh, I just don't think they're as deep as the other two, and with the acquisition of Lichtenwald uh, last week for Nick Wynn, uh, that makes their defense uh, a lot better and a lot scarier and a lot bigger as well. Hmm. Kevin, your take on who you think will be there in fourth and who you're hoping will be yeah, there Yeah, well, fourth. I see Lichtenwald putting Nipwin over the top to not get fifth at all. I don't think there's a chance in that happening now. But uh, the way Flint Flon's tanking right now, are they imploding or what's going mm -hmm. on? Um, our record against them is pretty spectacular in the playoffs over the past five years. So I'd like to see them play us, but I uh, hate to give them some future... Uh, ammo by actually beating us a series. It'll be yeah. kind of weird. <laughs> I, I've been actually conflicted that way too. It's like, I, <laughs> I, I kind of like the fact, <laughs> exactly. Is this like really the year to, to be facing the Bombers given the fact that they're going to be going all out for it? You know, I, yeah. I kind of like the fact the Ice Wolves are 3-0 and against the Bombers uh, career-wise, but uh, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Curtis, your, your take? Um, probably going to be Battleford. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, Humboldt with their, their goaltending and, and, and their, uh, their depth seems to be uh, starting to push up. Uh, Flint Lawn is just a little a little bump and roll. They're a pretty good hockey team. Nipwin with the with the addition of Eli and and who knows what's going to happen here in the next two days, next forty eight hours. But Battleford just has never been able to get on a roll. Never been a, a 
they're a good team, but they're not one of those teams that's going to scare anybody in the playoffs. So mm. I would think it's probably going to be them. And again, we've got a good shot against any of those teams if we end up playing them in the first round. Yeah, but if Battleford has has doesn't have a shot at scaring anybody in the playoffs, then without like then we don't have a chance at scaring anybody in the playoffs. So mm. that's why where's the I, I just don't the go for it thing. Is no, I, I and I agree. I mean, I don't. You, you're not going to go and make those moves to, to, to push you over the top. But again, you also don't want to, uh, to, to you mean, are you going to trade a 20 year old for a, you know, a, a bag of pucks and a ham sandwich? I mean, no, you're going to, you, you might as well get the, get what it's worth. And Bob knows what the value is and he'll make the move one way or another. Hmm. What do you guys uh, think in terms of like, who do you think it, of course it's pre deadline talk now, but uh, who do you think is the odds on favorite right now in the league to, to win the title? I, re I realize it's really early, but is there any team in particular that's, that's really impressing you right now. You think, man, that is going to be a challenge for anybody who faces them in the playoffs. To start with you there, Dustin. Well, Humboldt, what can you say about them? I mean, they, they've they been second all year to the flim flon fiddle. And all of a sudden, which isn't really surprising, they've overtaken flim flon. They look like probably one of the best teams in the league. Yorkton, who we'll see on Friday, is, a, is another really good team. They... Uh, Picked up a couple of big defensemen. Uh, Niebrandt is one of them who started the season in the Western Hockey League. So, uh, And the other thing, like you said, it, it's pre-deadline talk. So who knows what Humboldt's going to do? Who knows what Yorkton's going to do? Who knows what Melville and Flin Flon and Notre Dame, those three teams that are below those two teams but are right there in the running, are going to do as well. So it's going to be a, an interesting end to the season, uh, of course, for in the last two months here. So Yeah, Kevin? Yeah, after seeing Yorkton in earlier in the year, and they weren't really moving up the standings quite yet, and I saw how unreal their defense was, I thought, wow, these guys are going to do something, and they have. They're killing everybody in the South. And Melville, I just, they, don't, they build around offense and not defense. I just don't think they can keep the puck out of the net enough, even though they have a great goalie. Mm. Um, I just see Yorkton coming out of the South and, you know, Humboldt in the North, but I, I see Yorkton taking it and... He's built a good team for four years now, so mm. he's strong. Yeah, Curtis. Well, here, here's the thing. I can, we can say the Yorkton Humboldt and yeah. you know get on the bandwagon. I'm gonna go off the chart, and I'm gonna say it's probably gonna be uh, Notre Dame and uh, and Nippon. Mm. I mean, uh, Notre Dame has played extremely well, and when I saw him in here beginning of the season, I mean, just really good. And York or, uh, with Nippon, I think the the Eli trade is gonna just get them up and then you've got the uh, reigning uh, well goalie of the year last year in, in uh, Davis, Davis Jones, uh, I think that's going to be enough. One thing about Notre Dame is under Kevin White, they have been a really physical, yeah. probably the most physical Notre Dame club ever oh, in their history they, they under just, Kevin White. Yeah, for years they didn't take penalties there, yeah. <laughs> just their big ice play and yeah. European style. Probably the most comfortable team I've seen play in the Mel Hickman Uniplex this year just because they love the, the banging the bodies. But anyway, thanks guys uh, for being on the program, appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. All right. Just joining us, this is Ice Wolves Insider, and this has been another uh, segment of uh, From the Stands. We'll be right back to wrap things up. Well, that's all the time we have for this evening's edition of Ice Wolves Insider. I want to thank my guests this evening, and also want to remind you, the fans, that the Ice Wolves have some upcoming home games. On Friday the 11th, they'll host the Yorkton Terriers beginning at 7.30, and then on Sunday the 13th, they'll be back in action on home ice Against the Wayburn Red Wings, note the start time. That's a 3 p.m. start at the Mail Higley Uniplex. Well, again, that's all our time. We'll see you at the rink.